So uh, thank you, Yusuf, uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to share uh, some part of the result we are carrying out at uh, our university here at the Faculty of Science and Technique in uh, Tangier. So the topic of the, the talk today is uh, dealing with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, I mean the, the, the valorization of uh, some uh, a valuable uh, resources such as clays, local clays, uh, and in order to use them as a catalyst for uh, for uh, the production of uh, seam gas from uh, a valuable resources like uh, biogas. So this is the uh, among the the topics of research. Uh, if you allow me, I will present a little bit some. So the, uh, the the main topic actually is belonging to the uh, valorization of local resources such as place, biomass, etc. But also we are carrying research uh, on the development of uh, uh, materials and uh, nanomaterials for uh, renewable energy applications and uh, water pollution, etc. So this is mainly the strategy of uh, uh, our laboratory dealing with the development of low cost materials that may give some added value with regard to uh, application in the sustainable de development technology. Um, so uh, we managed to get uh, several pro uh, projects uh, 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 with the frame of uh, local funding like a seniors, a seniority calls or uh, areas and calls or others and uh, also within the international cooperation. And uh, these calls help us a lot uh, to, to get uh, equipment for our laboratory. So here, for example, the equipment we get from the Erizen project, so as to uh, develop a research topic with the development of uh, uh, nanomaterials that may serve as an additives for uh, 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 wind turbine uh, lubricant. And also the recent, the very recent, uh, uh, I mean, less than two years ago, we, three years ago, we managed to get also a, a fund for buying equipment. Uh, uh, this I will sh show you the picture of uh, uh, the, the solid oxide uh, electrolyte uh, fuel cell uh, setup that we managed to get. And also, in addition to this, we, we got the, uh, earlier, we got uh, fans for buying uh, surface area and uh, porosity analysis that help us a lot to develop uh, materials from uh, with a very controlled porosity, high surface area using biomass. And uh, this uh, was the topic we uh, for development for of, uh, of supercapacitors. Uh, for the energy storage using, using for example, uh, argon food shares that uh, as a raw materials, we managed to produce very high surface area uh, carbon and uh, with the very, very narrow porosity and controlled porosity. And uh, we, we got uh, an international patent uh, based on this research. So with respect to the, the today's talk, uh, uh, we are using uh, a very valuable local clays. And actually we were inspired from uh, these uh, people who are making handcraft object. Uh, and they are making several, several uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, equipment for kitchen and uh, uh, et cetera. So, and we use the same uh, material and we try to make uh, uh, what we call honeycomb monolith by extruding this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, I mean, this uh, clays. And what I'm trying to show you today that this material so very interesting and promising, uh, promising properties. First, as an adsorbent, and uh, later on, we based on the chemical composition and the structural stability, we managed to. To show a very interesting, uh, uh, very interesting, uh, also intrinsic catalytic properties. So this is why, uh, as uh, Mustafa said, I also changed a little bit the title of my talk by adding 
uh, towards harnessing local minerals as a low cost catalyst excluded as a honeycomb monolith for single gas produ production sustained by power to X technology. So I add sustained by power to X technology to make first the topic of my pre presentation fitting with the with the with the tutorial topic, which is devoted to power to X technology. And what I'm going to try to show you and how we by uh, starting from a very valuable local resources, we can make some very interesting catalysts that can be used in this kind of uh, uh, up to date technology, uh, the so called power to X. And uh, here in this slide, I show you some uh, an overview of the different uh, power to X concept. But mainly, the one we are interested in is the one that that involves methane and the CO2 and uh, to make uh, uh, as a raw material to make seeing gas production that can have, I mean, that can have, that can be used to produce uh, other chemicals or also can be used to get uh, power to gas to power. That means as a raw material, for example, uh, feeding the, the fuel cells. So there is a, a couple of works uh, devoted to this issue. And one of them is the, the one published by uh, Iranian teams uh, and uh, recently published in the Solar Energy Journal that that is uh, using the biogas here as a as a raw material to produce the the syngas which is used as the main building blocks for producing high added value and uh, of course the process here is uh, sustained by uh, by the solar energy. There is also another uh, work published by. Uh, uh, an Italian team uh, that is also devoted to this issue, and uh, which means that the biogas is a very is a very uh, a valuable and a very uh, interesting resources that can be used as a raw material to develop uh, uh, some very interesting uh, uh, product that can have a add that can give added value to. Uh, to, uh, I mean, based on the research, and uh, we can have, uh, for example, uh, uh, several several uh, applications that I will show. For example, and actually, this is a uh, this uh, uh, biogas resources is a kind of uh, energy that can be, uh, I mean, uh, coming from the sun actually, because through photosynthesis we can have a part of energy that is stored in the biomass as a chemical energy. And through the carbon cycle, it comes to uh, uh, several application. And here, the catalyst is, is having a, a key role, as I will explain, uh, because here uh, uh, I show you some uh, examples that can we, from where we can get uh, biogas with a very interesting methane CO2 composition that can be used even in uh, very local application, which uh, can give some kind of equipment that can be used to have some kind of a decentralized uh, uh, energy production system that can help local population for first getting this uh, uh, energy available for uh, local use. And uh, of course, here I show you that different uh, resources can be used for producing uh, for producing methane, uh, here. and so this is why this uh, uh, this uh, issue, I mean this uh, waste actually, and mainly the organic and uh, the organic fra fraction can be uh, regarded as a valuable resource for resources for providing carbon and uh, carbon through methane and CO two that can we use to produce, uh, to produce uh, syn gas. And of course, if we get the syn gas, then we can have several applications as Professor Dodi explained uh, earlier this, uh, this, uh, I mean this uh, in his talk. And of course, in this process, catalysis is playing a key role here because we are having several, uh, several reactions that involve the CO2 and the, uh, the methane. And uh, the, the, the reaction here is a dry reforming, but which is 
which require uh, 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 I mean, a significant amount of energy, 247 kilojoules per mole, to be carried out. And also, so this is why we talk about, we think about to sustain the process with the uh, additional resources like renewable resources. And also we have other reactions that are also used. Uh, which is, for example, like the partial oxidation of methane or even the steam reforming of methane, which is actually mainly an industrially the, the most used reaction for producing hydrogen actually at the at, uh, at the industrial level. Of course, we are having also the electrolysis of water for producing hydrogen, but still at the industrial level, uh, most of the, uh, the process uh, significant amount is produced by uh, steam reforming. And uh, here in this reaction also uh, can be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, combined to in the so-called uh, tri-reforming to get uh, some kind of, uh, uh, to be sustainable uh, uh, for, uh, with, with respect to, uh, I mean, the, the energy needed for, to, for running the process. And also it is neat because of the, the CO2 and methane activations are very, are very difficult uh, regarding the, the, the stability of the bounding and the oxidation state of CO2. So a very efficient catalyst is needed. So this is why at industrial level, yeah. So here I put, for those who are not very familiar with catalysis, uh, I put some uh, some slide that explain how the catalyst works. So, so mainly the catalyst is a uh, is a uh, material that helps the process by by increasing the the rate and how it works because it helps some by breaking some uh, some bones and letting the the others uh, forming. But here also I have also I show also a very very good example of the. Uh, the production of ASO3, which is very, very, very interesting for a phosphate industry because it is the, a key reaction for producing the sulfuric acid. And here uh, I showed the, the main catalyst, the most popular catalyst is based on the uh, vanadia pentoxide. And you can see here the, uh, the, the, the process, the catalytic act that is that consists on changing the oxidative state from the from the vanadium uh, four to vanadium uh, five. And of course, there is some oxygen mobility that is activated on, a, on the surface that helps the, the catalyst to be, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, carried, the catalytic act to be carried out, out at a cyclic manner. This, this is what we call the, the turnover frequency that allows to measure the kinetic of the, the reaction. And here also I give another example that shows how the, the process it carried out. And of course, for, the, for having the best performances of this catalyst, uh, we need to control the particle size. And also we need to, con to control also uh, other uh, issues that is uh, related to the engineering of the catalyst, like the shape and like also the reactor. Uh, so we need to actually here, I show the, the the chart for the catalyst designs that start from the, 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 the level of the uh, laboratory level with the exp exp explorative research to the, the, the engineering studies that deals with the, the, uh, some issues like a mass and his trans uh, heat transfer, the, the problem of pressure drop, etc. So this is why we need also to have an appropriate reactor to achieve the catalytic process at industrial scale. So for this reason, uh, uh, we, we uh, I give you here the uh, comparison between different types of reactors that involve catalysts, the various types, shape of the catalyst from ranging from the, from the I mean, the fixed bed reactor uh, to the fluid bed reactor to the monolith. So uh, of course the, uh, excluding the catalyst as a honeycomb monolith have several several adv adventures, mainly, mainly because of the, uh, the, I mean, the optimal contact between the fluid and the catalyst. 
a load by the shape like a, uh, like a honeycomb monolith. And the most, the most popular uh, shape is the, the three-way catalyst using the muffler of the vehicle for, the, for converting the, the, the engine gases, the so-called three-way catalyst. So the, the user cordialite excluded as a, which is based on the clay also, but with a very complicated uh, formulation, but coated, coated here, as I see here, with a, uh, with a, uh, a layer that can, that contain the active, the support and the active phase in order to achieve the, 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 the performance of the catalytic performances for the, for, for converting the, the main pollutant contained in the exhaust gas like uh, NOx, CO, and hydrocarbons. So, but here, uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, this, uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, this uh, solution of uh, wash coating the, 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 the support with, uh, with the layer, it has some uh, drawbacks like uh, the, uh, we, we cannot control the, the, the thickness of the of the layer, so this is why we were thinking in 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 our work to uh, to try to put some uh, active uh, uh, phase in a very innovative way, as I show you. So we thought about uh, the most uh, active uh, phase based on the uh, transition metal, mainly nickel, which is uh, which is uh, actually the most uh, uh, the most uh, metal used at uh, industrial level because uh, uh, we have to solve the problem of carbon deposition, the, what we call cooking. And of course, the, the most uh, uh, ideal catalyst is the one based on the noble metals like platinum, rhodium, uh, rhodium, and palladium, but those are very expensive. So this is why at industrial level, they are, uh, they are mainly using nickel. But nickel now it has with respect to the toxicity, they have some uh, limitations and we have to think about another metals. And uh, of course, uh, as I said before, with respect to the prices. So uh, if we compare the price of nickel here to the others like platinum, platinum, palladium, or rhodium. So it is, uh, I mean, incomparable because this is very cheap. And of course it can work with the iron and cobalt. So this is why, and uh, sometimes at industrial level, they use also in order to, in order to have a better activity, they use also, uh, uh, they use uh, magnesium, they use uh, calcium as a promoter in order to help the catalyst to perform the, uh, uh, the, uh, the catalytic act in a very efficient way. So taking this in mind, uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we uh, decided to, to, uh, to engineer and develop a catalyst based using local resources uh, uh, in order to uh, use some, uh, to, to be inspired from what I have said before uh, and uh, uh, to be very active in the, the production of syngas using uh, using biogas as a as a raw uh, product. So, and uh, based on what I said before, uh, so we the, the best way was to to uh, and to make it. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, favorable for the industrial application. We 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 need to uh, to extrude the the catalyst as a honeycomb monolith. So this is why we tried several uh, uh, clays from the local area of Morocco and from the north area and uh, to achieve extrusion. So for this, uh, we use a, a process inspired from uh, the ceramic production uh, using additives and plastics. And, and uh, we, we measure, uh, the, I mean, the, the, uh, some, uh, some uh, plasticity uh, characteristic we call liquid limit and the plastic index 
because this is a characteristic we, 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 we measure them using the technique for use from a spy from ceramic and we call uh, Casa Grande. So, uh, uh, so we use several type of, of clays and we managed to exclude uh, clays with the very uh, acceptable mechanical properties without using uh, additives and, uh, and uh, chemicals, which is very interesting regarding the, 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 the green chemistry requirements. So this uh, issue has been uh, uh, patented. So we, 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 we applied for an international patent with the University of Cadiz, which is our neighbors here in the, the south of Spain. And uh, uh, because uh, they provide us with the extrusion machine. So here I just talked before. And uh, so what we decided is uh, first, we decided to check the adsorptive uh, properties of this place. And uh, for this reason, and before starting working with the, with the uh, dry metal forming, we, we first, we check the adsorption the, the, using this clays as adsorbents for volatile organic compounds. That was the starting of our research. And uh, this uh, topic was, uh, was uh, suggested uh, based on uh, uh, local industrial preoccupation. They are using uh, some uh, organic solvent and we try to provide a, a catalytic filters as an adsorbent, adsorbent for a volatile organic compound. And for this reason, we, 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 we developed uh, a testing procedure. Uh, uh, Professor Tarek, we, yeah. you, so we are, uh, we are way above the 20 minutes. So, oh, really? So, uh, uh, okay, so I will, move, I, will move to the, I will move to the topic very quickly. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, so... Uh, uh, do we need, do we need, uh, do we, need, uh, how much time still have? I, you have two minutes. Oh, two minutes. Oh, anyway, so uh, what I will try to explain is based on the, the mineral, mineralogical composition of the, of the, of the, the clay. So we can see here that it is mainly, it contains mainly uh, silicium and alumina, and we also aerium and potassium, magnesium. So, so actually, these are the main, the main, the main product, the main product that are that are uh, 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 used for the for catalyst. So we are having a support which is a, a silica alumina, and may, mainly iron also is used as a, an active phase, and also potassium, magnesium as a as a dopant. So this is what I, uh, we, we, we show, uh, and also the, uh, based on X, uh, uh, XRD, we, we showed there is a, some structural stability, uh, even at high temperature. So we managed to, 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 to uh, I mean, to, to show that this material had very interesting, interesting catalytic pro properties with respect to, to, the, to the oxidation of volatile organic compound. So this is what we show based on, the, I mean, the measurements using the, the IR equipment I show you. And uh, we show that here from, from, for example, from this slide, we show that the, the clay can help by lowering the, the temperature needed for the total conversion of the, of the, for example, CO, but also the other volatile organic compound. So that was very, very, uh, very, I mean, help us a lot to, to, to push towards the development of catalyst. So for, uh, for uh, methane re reforming and the production of, uh, of, uh, of seen gas. So here, but the point here, what I show here, and which will be very interesting, that means when we put uh, a layer of a cobalt, for example, the, we are gaining in, a, in a activity because we are lowering the total to temperature, temperature. And also what is here interesting, we are lowering the, the size of particles. And this, this lower particle size explain the, the higher, uh, the higher, uh, the higher catalytic performances. 
So with this in mind, we try to use this play as a support for a catalyst for producing a, a seam gas production. And here by adding, by adding, a, adding appropriate amount of nickel and cerium. So first we check this as a powder and then we try to, because we, we have to find the best catalytic uh, formulation. And then afterwards we try to, uh, to extrude as a honeycomb monolith. So the catalyst, of course, it needs to be- uh, So please, ta Professor Tare, conclude. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, then I, then I will conclude uh, and uh, still have uh, a couple of, uh, I was thinking that I was having about 30 minutes. Anyway, uh, so to conclude here, I conclude here, I still have a lot of, uh, anyway, here we, uh, okay. So as a conclusion, so we, we managed to show, to show that by adding, there is a possibility to, to, to use the clay as a support for an active phase based on an equal. And by adding a magnesium as a promoter, we provide a significant amount of a basic site, which was very helpful for promoting the, the, the seam gas production. So unfortunately, I didn't have time to, to, to give you the, and show you the result. And at the end, uh, uh, the, the, the catalyst for, for formulation based on uh, on nickel magnesium uh, supported on the monolith clay uh, was very active even after 24 hours of reaction. Thank you very much for your attention. And then I hope, of course, I will help. I will mention here that I need to, to I need to thank uh, several PhD students involved on, uh, in, in this uh, project and also uh, colleagues from the, the different uh, uh, cooperative project involved in this uh, in this research thank you very much